call. It's like bling blow, ayy. Go on up, go on up, go on up. 2020 game, first time since Bill Chamberlain. We just watch history. It's fine if the Thunder are going to be in rebuild mode. They're just going to have to do it without Russell Westbrook. The OKC Stars run of 11 seasons with the team might not see a 12th, not with the Thunder cutting salary and stockpiling draft picks in the wake of Paul George Clippers trade request and execution. So what does that mean now for Brody? Adrian Wojnarowski has more. With all-star Paul George gone to the Los Angeles Clippers and a trade over the weekend, with the Thunder no longer in championship contention, Russell Westbrook is welcoming the idea of general manager Sam Presti finding a trade that would end Westbrook's 11-year tenure with Oklahoma City. Westbrook, his agent, Thad Fouché, and Sam Presti, they worked together for over a decade. They're going to continue to work together here to try to find a landing spot for Russell Westbrook, who has four years, $170 million dollars, left on his contract one team who has some interest in exploring some conversations with the thunder the miami heat and that's a team that russell westbrook i'm told would be very open to playing for nba reporter royce young now covers the thunder good to have a few minutes with him on sports center am so royce it sounds like there's mutual interest between the player and the team the team being the heat the player being westbrook we know what the contract numbers are though so how challenging is this going to be for gm sam presti to get this deal done it's going to be extremely challenging, Randy, and a lot of this has to do with the timing because free agency is effectively over. Teams have spent their money, so there's really no one available for Westbrook to be just traded into cap space. And and the, all, all of those gymnastics are going to have to be kind of done now for the Thunder to figure out a way to find a trade partner for Westbrook because also I think it's critical to, to say that the Thunder want to do right by Westbrook here. They, they, they want to get together with him, make sure that he goes to a destination that he prefers, that he's comfortable with. And so this is a this is going to be a mutual thing between both sides. But as we see, Russell Westbrook's going to make $47 million when he's 34 years old. And that's giving a lot of teams around the league uh, a little bit of pause when they decide What's that guy going to look like? Somebody that relies on athleticism. What's he going to look like when you're paying him almost $50 million at 34 years old? So the timing of this has made it challenging. The limited scope of teams involved is going to make it challenging. So, look, the Thunder want to get this done sooner than later. Both sides are motivated to get it done sooner than later. But the Thunder are going to be patient. They're going to be meticulous. They're going to be measured as they typically do with these types of things. This was not the plan in OKC. Russell Westbrook was not supposed to, quote unquote, grow old, at least in NBA years. He wasn't supposed to grow old on his own. He's supposed to be alongside Paul George. So now George is a clipper and the other two of the two superstars, Westbrook, could be gone sooner rather than later. What's the reaction you're hearing from the Thunder organization about this need to rebuild? Well, let's be clear. They did not want to trade Paul George. They wanted to run this back next year and have a chance to compete in the Western Conference. But in some way, Randy, they look at this kind of as a gift because they knew the bell was going to toll eventually in Oklahoma City. They've had an incredible run over a decade of contending in the Western Conference. They pulled every lever they can pull to extend this window as much as they possibly could. Um, and, and in a lot of ways, they looked at it, they had one more shot. Paul George had a player option after next season, and they understood that their chips were in. If they did not compete for an NBA title next year, get to the Western Conference Finals, maybe the NBA Finals, they were going to be looking at trading Paul George at that point anyway. And with the circumstances that happened here, while well, they were stunned, there's no doubt about it, they also looked at the circumstances and saw the fact that this was maybe going to come anyway, and they were able to leverage more out of it than they ever could have. So it was not something ideal, but they also looked at it as a little bit of a gift. Thunder have made the postseason in nine of Westbrook's 11 seasons with the organization that's worked. Shot a career high from three-point range on his way to a career high in points in just under 14 a game. The Nuggets, one of TD's contenders in 2020, surely got stronger with this addition. As for the Thunder, their roster starting to have some glaring holes to fill. Grant started 77 games for them last season. Of course, Paul George, first team All-NBA performer for them, also gone. So OKC down to two starters in the matter of the, down two starters in the matter of days and reports are picking up and that one of those Russell guys Westbrook yes might be leaving 
Russell has done so much for that organization. 11 years being there, the finals, Western Conference finals, MVP, uh, three years of triple doubles in a row. So he's done so much, but the community will be missed if he leaves. He's given his all. So the new word for him today is the fact that Westbrook reportedly has agreed to um, start looking for a trade, and also Sam Presti has agreed to start looking to trade him. So if that's the case, um, for Russell Westbrook and company, when should this happen? When could this happen? I think it needs to happen, especially before the season starts, you know, because you want to give him time to be able to make his move, transition to wherever, wherever he decides to go. But he's done so much, you're going to be professional about talking to him and kind of finding the destination that fits his game. And also knowing that he's done so much for that organization that he's been the guy that's been the face of OKC for 11 years. And, he, and when you think about what he's done in the community, just how well he's been as a player, it's going to be hard to walk away from a player like Russell Westbrook and get the value in return because it's going to be tough. Certainly, OKC, uh, if they move Westbrook in full rebuild mode, right. all of the signs seem to be pointing to that. The Lakers with a considerable pickup using their room exception to sign Avery Bradley, a two-time all-defensive team member, has started all but four games that he's played in the last five years. Will he assume that same role on this team as a starter? I like that pickup. You know, he's a really good defender. He knows how to play uh, in the pick and roll, and then he brings the experience to this team that uh, when you think about where they're at right now, they're signing guys to one and two year deal. He's a solid piece to come off the bench, but we also know he can be inserted into that uh, starting lineup as well. So will he start? I still think Danny Green is going to start. I think Grant, Danny Green will be your shooting guard, and we might have a special guy that's been playing the point guard for many, many years. He might be your point, but also we, uh, you have Rondo that's there. He brings the leadership and also the championship pedigree that he has. All right, let's take a look at uh, the reported starting lineup for the Los Angeles Lakers Check it out. season. Ooh. And there you go, the guy you said, Danny Green there, Kyle Kuzma, Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins, and the key to this, LeBron James – at point guard, now here's the thing, okay? LeBron has always initiated the offense, but the report came out that he is going to have a new role, quote, as the point guard for the Los Angeles Lakers. How is that any different than what he did in Miami or Cleveland? He has been the point forward his whole career in the NBA. It's what he's good at. He's great at facilitating, getting guys shots from outside. He puts so much pressure on the defense that when you have shooters around him, and that's where he's, he's been able to win championship because you're surrounding him with the right guys and it gives him driving lanes because now you can't stop him at the boxes and elbows. Well, LeBron has averaged eight assists or more in each of the last three years. The only time he did that before in his career was back in 2009, 2010. So really, this is the stretch in which we see him assisting the most in his career. Has he already assumed this role the last three years and we just are now giving him that name? No, no, no. He's always been at Even when you think about the way he scores, you know, when you think about a player that scored over 30,000 points, that means he is a scorer, but also he's a facilitator. He controls the offense, whether it's in transition, in the half-court set. He's the best at, I, he's the best I've seen when it comes to driving and kicking out the three-point shoot. And then just that size, you can't teach him. the length of athleticism, and he has the best vision. His vision is like Magic Johnson because once he gets out in transition, he's looking for not only shooters but guys to finish at the basket. And if they are, they're not there, he can finish himself at the basket. Certainly Avery Bradley, another guy with a career uh, three-point percentage over 35%. I believe it's at 36% for his career. So those guys around LeBron James. It will get better. Now, all guys that can shoot that outside shot. The free agency frenzy between the two teams in L.A., oh, it continued today. We know about Avery Bradley. The Clippers brought back to Michael Green with a two-year, $10 million deal. The 28-year-old came over from Memphis last season, shot 40% from three-point range on six attempts a game with L.A. last year. We talked about this after the trade. The Clippers needing some depth up front and bringing him back. Yeah, I really like Jermichael. Jermichael is a versatile player. He can pick and pop. He can defend low, down low. He can put the ball on the floor. And what he brings, like I said, with, with that team is he's another body, but he brings toughness. And we see a team that's putting together a really good bench. We know what the, uh, the duo is going to do once they're on the court. But now you're talking about putting guys out that can make shots, that can make plays, and it's going to make it easy for Paul George and Kawhi Leonard when they're on the court that this is a player that we can trust. 
He has that experience just getting into the playoff, but just brings that length and athleticism there. TD Green uh, provided floor spacing as a stretch for down the stretch for the Clippers. How valuable is that with Kawhi and PG? I know they can shoot from outside, but to exactly. have a four slash sometimes he played the five, be able to shoot the, the three. And well, he, he took six threes per game in those last 24 games. Well, the way the game is now, you want to have lanes to drive because now you're having two of the best playmakers in the game. We know how well they play defense, but when you get in a half-court set, you want to make sure that you have wings and guys in the corners that can make shots. And he opens up the floor because these guys are going to be able to get by their man. And if you have solid three-point shooter, it's going to give them a chance to even drive more, get to the foul line. But you need to have someone you can kick the ball out to that is over the 35% range from, three point, uh, from the three-point line. And that's what they have established. And then just having guys like Lou Will, Montreal Harold, those are players that coming off the bench, you know they can get you 25 to 50 on a night nightly basis. So now they have established that bench, kind of like what Toronto did with Kawhi Leonard, is that we can have one star player, but we need our role players to understand their role, but also be able to score when they step on the court and defend. Well, the Clippers finished last season second in three-point percentage, right? The Lakers, 29th Ooh. in the league. Have they closed that gap a bit? And, and I'm comparing these two teams because, as you pointed out, these are the two favorites right now in the West. And – Shooting from outside is going to be a huge key. It's going to be critical, but we have to give them at least a couple of months of playing with one another because the chemistry with the Lakers, you have inserted a lot of players that have played other places, have done well. So how can we get these guys to play the right way but also know what their role is? I think when you, you look at the Clippers, they have established guys on their team that have been shooters, and now it's about can these guys continue to keep playing the same way they're playing with the two stars on their team. And I think with LeBron, he's definitely going to make sure that he's going to find those shooters. He's such a great facilitator. He's going to make the game easier for everyone. Well, the team that we can't overlook out West, you know, the team that's been the five Western Conference Finals, right, the Warriors, we say that every night because – they made more, more moves as well with the uh, Atlanta Hawks. They traded forward Amari Spellman to Golden State for Damian Jones in the second-round pick. Golden State also picked up free agent Alec Burks, who spent the first seven years of his career in Utah, but was traded to the Cavs and the Kings last season. The second pick in the 2014 draft, Barry Parker signed a two-year, $13 million deal with the Atlanta Hawks. Tony, what do you make of the Hawks moves, seeing that they made two? They're really trying to secure that that wing position. And when you bring Jabari, uh, Jabari Parker over, you bring a guy that's and put the ball on the floor, long and athletic, finishes at the basket, and he brings experience. And that's what they need right now because they're building a really good team here in Atlanta. And I like their pieces. When you can add a player like Jabari Parker, he gives you a, another player from the outside that can make shots, but also a guy that he can go, let, go down low and post. But now you have depth. That's what Atlanta's working with, depth now. Well, coming up next, we know.